Thank you for the good hair. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Studio City Neighborhood Council special board meeting. Today is Wednesday, August 31st, and this special meeting is to pick up from where we left off at the last board meeting on the 17th. It is now 7.03, and we're going to call this meeting to order. You can please take the roll. We'll get started. Okay, can comments? Not yet. Uh, think uh, Cutler? Absent. Uh, Randa Free? Absent. Ira Gold? Here. Jeff Harwick? Here. Julie Hullihan? Here. Scott Mundell? Present. Chit Meehan? Here. Brandon Marino? Here. Richard Nitterberg. Here. Karen Soro. Not here. He's not dead. Adam Summer. Not here. Alexa Steinberg. Here. And Abby Velasco present. Okay, we have a quorum. Fantastic. Let's get started with president's comments. I'll make a few brief comments. Uh, with regards to the special meeting that I was trying to schedule for the proposed wildlife ordinance, there was not enough board support to get a quorum. So this matter is now off the board calendar. Uh, I also wanna thank Richard Niederberg for stepping up to be the acting chair of the budget committee. So thank you, Richard. I think they're gonna be meeting in about a week or so. We have some big budget items for this fiscal year that they have to tackle. So thanks a lot, Richard. Uh, there's some people I wanted to thank that were present at Saturday's uh, CERT disaster drill. I don't see Patty Kirby, but she can watch this on <laughs> YouTube. I wanna give her a big shout out for helping to organize it. It was a really big success. The turnout was huge. And I also, of course, wanna thank the neighborhood council for uh, agreeing to purchase the disaster kits we trained with those kits uh, on Saturday, and it was very useful to see where the kits were, the contents of them, and go on our uh, disaster drill. Also, special thanks to Patrick, Chin, Christy, Chip, Jeff, Adele, David, Jerry, Jeff, and a big thank you to Katie at the Radford Studios for helping. Uh, we're going to do something a little different tonight as far as public comment on the non-agenda items. There aren't very many members of the public here tonight. So it's a good night to try this out. I have a lot of complaints and requests from stakeholders who feel that one minute is not enough for them. So just on that one agenda item, when we get to public comments for non-agenda, we'll open it up to a minute and a half as a test and we'll see what happens after which we'll go back to the usual uh, one minute. So now I'm gonna run through the three items on our agenda, the board vacancy, business representative seat, defined by our bylaws as a business representative, as a person who legally provides goods or services for compensation in Studio City and who maintains a valid City of Los Angeles tax registration certificate, otherwise known as a City of Los Angeles business license, or owns business real property in Studio City, stakeholders who are 18 years of age or older at this time of filing for candidacy. If you're interested in joining the SCNC board, please email board at studiocitync.org with a statement of interest. We have received one statement so far, and this uh, that person will be agendized in September. Uh, hopefully we'll have more interest in joining our board from a business representative. We still have uh, a vacancy for the land use committee chair. This position, the position of land use committee chair is currently available as our land use committee members. If you are interested in becoming the land use committee chair or serving on the committee, please email smandel at studiocitync.org for the statement of interest. And we have one more board vacancy for the youth member seat defined by our bylaws as a stakeholder who is at least 14 years and no more than 17 years of age on the day of the appointment please email smandel at studiocitync.org with a statement of interest. And I'm sure we all want to thank JJ for his service on the youth seat and all the work he did. And we wish him all the best 
in his uh, in his future at college. So good luck to you, JJ, and thank you for that. That concludes the president's comments. So we're on to item three, the secretary report. Abby. Um, the minutes were submitted uh, for August 17th for meetings and attendance report, uh, tra uh, training compliance. Um, do you have any questions, comments, approve, not approve? I take that as an approve. And also, um, as Scott mentioned, JJ is no longer here. He's in college now, so we wish him well. And Chip uh, Meehan, have you completed your certifications? I have. I am completely certified. Yay! I'm certifiable. All right. Thank you. And that's it for me. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> Jeff? Hi, everyone. Um, not much to report. Um, I need all the committee chairs who had motions passed at the last meeting to get me the drafts, that's that's how I guess the protocol is. And especially important is the addressees to whom uh, the corresponding secretary should distribute um, our CISs or our request for action to. And um, be careful about uh, who the addressees are because I know there have been some changes in Nithya Raman's office with staff, uh, also with um, uh, um, Assemblyman Nazarian's office, and also Krikorian's office. So uh, people in charge of one commit, one uh, issue or the other may have switched places or be gone. So please take a look at that very carefully so we can get the, the CISs and RFAs to the correct person. Thanks. Great, thank you, Jeff. Kim's not here yet, so I'm going to uh, read her motion from the treasurer's report. The Board of the City of City Neighborhood Council approves reimbursement to board member Richard Niederberg in the amount of $160.09 for the purchase of beverages and snacks for the National Night Out event. Purchase was made at Costco, which would not accept use of the Los Angeles City credit card. This is brought by Kim Clements. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Jeff. We'll now go to public comment on item five, the reimbursement of Richard Niederberg. If you're in the public and you'd like to comment on this particular item, please raise your hand. Barry, go ahead. I only wanted to say thank you to Richard for um, doing this. It allows us to get much better pricing at Costco than we would any any place else. And hopefully someday the city will get a credit card that's either um, a Visa and not a MasterCard that would work at Costco or that is a true debit card, which this is not. We thought it was, but it's called a purchasing card. So um, thank you, Richard. Well, the city does not like doing this and it, and it's hassled me about it before. It will probably hassle me about it again. I would rather not keep doing it because at some point they'll just say no. Anyway, that's life. Thank you, Barry and Richard. Seeing no hands, public comment is closed. Seeing no- It's okay if Brandon uses his card. <laughs> it's like he can get reimbursed all he wants easily. Just, uh, I've kind of worn out my welcome. Thank you, Richard. I think we can vote on Richard's reimbursement. Okay, Kim Clements is absent. Dean Cutler, absent. Randa Free, absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Hartwick. Yes. Julie Julian. Yes. Andale. Yes. Chip Meehan. Chip. He stepped out. We'll come back to him. Okay. Brandon. Oh, there he is. There he is. Sorry. Yes. Brandon Marino. Yes. Richard Nitterberg. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think so. Okay. Karen Sorrow is absent. Adam Summer. Oh, absent. Alexis Steinberg. Yes. 
Abby Velasco, yes, motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to item six, Brandon Marino. A couple of things. Uh, September 10th is going to be our movie night in Canto that Abby has been working her tail off to put together. Uh, Nithya Raman is going to be there to speak. There will be a taco stand. It's going to be over at Beeman Park uh, Studio City Recreation Center uh, from 5.30 to, I believe, 10 o'clock. Um, on our website and our social media, um, Twitter and Facebook, there is a poster uh, and a link to the Eventbrite um, page, which you can register. Registering is free. They just want to know how many people are showing up so they can um, get everything in order. Uh, also on our social media pages, our Facebook and Twitter pages, I put up something today. Uh, obviously, excessive heat warning and ozone advisory for Los Angeles is in effect until the 5th of September. I put a little something up regarding heat exhaustion or heat stroke. It's a little something we got in our inbox today from the city. I thought it might be a good idea to share it. So um, it's there on our Facebook page and Twitter page if you want to know more about heat exhaustion or heat stroke and um, the telltale signs, whether or not it's either and or. So um, other than that, there's no really nothing else to talk about. So that'll be that. Thank you, Brandon. Moving on to number seven, public comment on non-agenda items within the neighborhood council's jurisdiction. Like I mentioned before, we're gonna bump this up to 90 seconds. Ira, will you uh, be timekeeper, please? Got it. Okay, if you're in the public and you have a comment, raise your hand and you will have 90 seconds. Lionel, go ahead, please. Thank you, good evening. My name is Lionel. I'm volunteering with the 2022 Congress um, um, of Neighborhoods. So the Los Angeles Congress of Neighborhoods is, is a yearly event that aims to help neighborhood council leaders obtain the tools and establish the relationships they need to build a successful future for their communities. It brings together leaders from the city of Los Angeles, 99 neighborhood councils for a day of networking and education. Traditionally, an in-person event has been held at the Los Angeles City Hall and in response to the pandemic, the Congress has moved to a digital format in 2020. Our theme of our 2022 is the future of LA celebrating our city and it will be an online event again this year. Um, visit neighborhood Congress LA, I mean, neighborhood Congress LA to learn more. Um, the Congress is made possible by contributions by neighborhood councils like yours. Um, I guess I'm here to, a, to ask if you could help make Congress of Neighborhoods possible with your contributions. The city clerk allows for neighborhood councils to make direct contributions to the Congress of Neighborhoods. It will be an NPG, but an, a direct donation to the Congress account, which is handled by Empower LA. If you contact us at info at neighborhoodcongress.la, we will send you the information on how to do this. Um, so, yeah, thank you for allowing me to speak at your meeting and please consider making a motion to contribute to the Congress neighborhood support of Congress LA 2022. It's time, please yeah. conclude your talk. Thank you. Uh, Peter Cole, go ahead, please. Hi there. Um, first of all, Chip uh, last night ran an awesome meeting with Harvard Westlake, so congratulations. Um, and then I overheard the beginning of the meeting that Alexa is out of town. So uh, Alexa, I hope you checked with Brandon first because uh, you, you know he's the keeper of all the stakeholder demerits. So you wouldn't wanna get a black mark like, uh, like I did with Brandon, so be careful. And lastly, just wanna clarify something that former president Randy kept hammering home at the last board meeting about a committee member or stakeholder being a so-called agent of record for a nonprofit, which, uh, wow, that sounds so, so scary, right, Randy? Well, first of all, Randy, there is no such thing. So the term is agent for service of process. I think that would be called a stating of falsehood, Randy. So the California Secretary of State definition is an agent for service of process is an individual who resides in California or a registered 1505 corporate agent designated to accept service of process, that would be court papers, if the business entity is sued. And that's it. No doubt you'll continue making something out of nothing, as is your way, Randy. Nice job creating a uh, hostile atmosphere for all of us stakeholders. Thank you. 
Thank you. Call in user number one. Go ahead, please. Call in user number one. Please unmute yourself. Not working. Okay, call in user number one. I think you're having technical difficulties. So we're going to move on to announcements by government representatives, which there are none. Moving on to item nine, Transportation Committee. Gary, go ahead. Okay, um, our first motion is, I will read, the Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, opposes the Los Angeles City Planning Department and the Los Angeles Department of Transportation, LADOT, drafts for the proposed Transportation Demand Management TDM program update. Um, and there is an accompanying letter, president's letter for this um, that I can read. And it goes as follows. The transportation demand management TDM program changes are a transparent move to excuse developers from CEQA requirements. At the online meeting, it was specifically stated that the TDM update was a ministerial process, example, without any oversight or recourse. The exemptions allowed by changing for parking will not discourage car ownership or usage. Building owners will merely reduce rents or association fees to compensate for the fees, resulting in no change to the status quo. Um, mixed use developments will not reduce car trips. People who work in the retail spaces of the buildings will not be able to afford to own or rent there. People who can afford to do so will not spend all their time and disposable income in the establishments inside their buildings. In dense urban environments, they would be walking or using other non-automobile transportation to shops, restaurants, etc in their immediate neighborhood anyway. So no net change in car trips. Public transportation is decades away from being significantly viable in Los Angeles. Developers can give transportation passes to residents, but they will again be just a cost of doing business factored into fees and profit margins and not actually used to reduce car trips. Bicycle amenities like bike racks, etc., give density bonuses but will not be used. The perception is that cycling in LA is too dangerous for most people to attempt it. Beyond that, the only practical way to communicate or do other trips via bike is to and from destinations like home, work, commerce that have secure private or personal indoor storage of bikes that would be at home, inside one's office, or extremely rare, rare guided, guarded commercial inside bark, bike parking. Leaving a bike outside regardless of locked use is almost guaranteed to result in theft. After losing a bike or two to criminals, people go back to using their cars. This is true even for those with 10 or fewer mile commutes which otherwise should be perfect given LA's climate. There will be little or no enforcement or exemptions granted to developer, developers via TDM. Huge density bonuses are granted to having significant percentages of units devoted to sub-market rate rental or sale, but they never will actually be rented or sold as such. In the event that penalties actually are levied, they will be trivial fines, once again factored into the cost of doing business and dis dismissed. This is why the Studio City Neighborhood Council opposes the Los Angeles City Planning Department 
and the Los Angeles Department of Transportation draft for the proposed Transportation Demand Management, TDM, program update. Um, and this would be um, submitted by our president, Scott Mandel, along with the initial motion that I read. Scott? Thank you for that, Barry. We'll go now to public comment. Anybody in the public would like to make a comment regarding what Barry just read? Uh, raise your hand, you'll have a minute to speak. Not seeing any hands, let's go to the board. Public comment is closed, Richard. It was only I wanted you to comment as a bicyclist, probably one of the most, you know, familiar with the problems with basically. What is your feeling about this? Thanks, Richard. Well, I, I cycle, I take public transit, and I walk and I actually use electric scooters more than most, not more than anybody, but more than most. And I can tell you, and the statistics bear out, that this is the worst year in pedestrian and cycle and uh, scooter uh, injuries and fatalities ever. And public transport, I've, in my opinion, is not safe, and it's actually pretty disgusting. And the, I, what I suggest people do is when you're gonna go somewhere, go on to Google Maps and click transit just for kicks and see how long it takes to go on your normal daily destinations, whether it's work, shopping, to the zoo, wherever it is you're going. Type, uh, type in public transit and see what your options are and tell me if that, uh, if that is gonna work for you. It, it doesn't. And uh, thanks for Richard for teeing up that softball. Brandon, go ahead. Okay, my question for Barry is if he can answer this directly. I didn't have a chance to read these, uh, but what is the what's the um, general idea about how many street uh, curbside parking spots might be removed for bike lanes? Because that's a big problem. People who are taking bikes. I mean, I guess you could take a bike on a sidewalk, though it's very dangerous. But if you take it on the street, you can't see anything. Um, with the cars parked there not only just cars pulling out of driveways, but people opening their car doors without a second thought, not even looking back. They're on their phone, they're doing something, and they just swing open their doors. So I would think that this proposal might be removing quite a bit of curbside parking in the city of Los Angeles. Is there anything in this that discusses that? I, I believe this is only for on-property amenities and bonuses um, to developers um, in terms of taking away parking for bicycles within the property. Um, but I can say as far as bike lanes, a decade ago, the city was talking about putting bike lanes in our section of Studio City on Ventura and taking away a traffic lane. Can you mm -hmm. imagine Ventura in Studio City? with one lane in each direction. Uh, we oh. squelched that at the time, so, but never say never, it could be back. Mr. President, could I follow up my question with a really yeah, quick sure, question? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, Barry, you, said, you mentioned before that Laura Friedman speaking at the SCRA, this has the scent of Laura Friedman all over it. Um, is this something you might, a question you might pose to her at the SCRA meeting? Uh, definitely, yes. And I, I, one other thing I should mention is that this letter, president's letter was basically written by um, um, our committee member, Mark Rubin, on transportation, who's been on the committee for like a decade. He's the vice chair of the committee, and I thought it was uh, really well done. So thank you to Mark if you're out there tonight. I think the Healthy Streets Ordinance uh, that's going to be on the ballot is going to address some of the uh, striping and bike lanes and all that other stuff as well. So did it just I mean, fail? Yeah. Did, it, did it not pass um, city council? Or is that no, Healthy this, Streets LA? It's going to be on the ballot, is, is my understanding. It, yeah, it passed city council to be on the ballot. They could have actually, they didn't have the balls, but they could have voted it themselves. But instead, they chose the easy way out to send it to the voters so they don't have to commit on the record. 
but it's actual November of 24, isn't it, Barry? Um, I believe I believe it is because well it it might be the primary of twenty four because I think it's too late for the November ballot. Yeah, I think that was the thing. It was a punt for two years. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure it will be. So it would be March because in a presidential year, our primary is in March. So I'm sure it would be they would do it the next election and not wait until November of 24. Any other comments or are we ready to vote on this? I think we're ready to vote. Okay, Ken Clements, absent. Dean Cutler, absent. Randa Freed, absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Harwick. Yes. Julie Julian. Yes. Scott Mandel? Yes. Chief Meehan? Yes. Brandon Marino? Yes. Richard Nitterberg? Yes. Karen Sorrow, absent. Adam Summer? Oh, absent. Alexa Steinberg? Yes. Abby Velasco? Yes. Motion passes. Barry? Okay, the um, second um, motion B from transportation, the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, opposes both SB 1067 from Portentino and AB 2097 from uh, Laura Friedman, which both take away local control of parking spaces required by law by local governments. Um, and I, in just doing a quick checking because um, the assembly session ends at, at the, and the Senate sessions end at midnight tonight, AB 297, 2097 has passed, but the governor has not signed yet. And as far as the Senate Bill 1067, I think it died, but I'm not positive on that. But sending this motion at this point in time is still, uh, I think, uh, worth us doing it because it's, again, the state trying to take away local control from the city. Scott? Thanks, Barry. Uh, we're going to go now to public comment on this item. If you're a member of the public and you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. You'll have one minute. Call on user number one. Go ahead. Call on user one. Can you hear me? We hear you now, speaker. Oh, good. Thank you. Hi, it's Ruth, um, your ruthless neighbor. Um, I just wanted to ask once again if there's any houses available for somebody who has a voucher or a subsidy in Studio City. Because if we have 7% vacancy, more than 1,000 units, and there's not a single person that somebody with like a VASH voucher like my friend has, or a Section 8 voucher like my other friend has, can actually move into with that subsidy or voucher, then we need more affordable housing, truly deeply affordable, acutely low income, um, something that somebody who's like getting SSI or disability can afford. And so if there's lo like if local control can handle it, prove it, like approve some units or, or free some units up. Um, I see Airbnb has like 110. A lot of them are affordable. I think the new Sportsman's Lodge proposal has a few dozen of like low-income units, but they need to accept vouchers. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Any else? Anyone else from the public want to comment on this particular agenda item? Please raise your hand. Not seeing any more hands. Public comment is closed. Brandon Marino, go ahead, please. Yeah, we voted on this before. Um, Barry, I can't remember the... Um... The specific assembly bill, but it was from Laura Friedman. This is a while back, I think, um, quite a while back, but still within the, I think, um, the two-year cycle. I think Barry was talking about. 
Um, it's almost the same exact bill, but I think it adds commercial real estate to the mix. And um, we voted it down last time, so I don't see why we shouldn't vote it down this time as well. And, and it was somewhat altered, so chiming in again is, I think, is a good thing. Are there any other comments from board members before we vote? Kim is with us now. Hi, Kim. Welcome. Not seeing any other uh, board hands. Let's bring this one to a vote. Okay. Can you comment? Hi. I didn't hear enough. I just got on, so I have to refrain. Okay. Abstain. Uh, Dean Cutler, absent. Randall Freed, absent. Ira Gold? Yes. Jeff Harwick? Yes. Julie Houlihan? Yes. Scott Mandel? Yes. Chief uh, Meehan? Yes. Brandon Marino? Yes. Richard Niederberg? Yes. Karen Soros absent. Adam Summers absent. Alexa Steinberg? Yes. Abby Velasco? Yes. Motion passes. Next, okay, go moving. Government on. Affairs, continue, Barry, please. Yes, motion A from Government Affairs. The Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, agrees with City Council file 22-002-S106 to oppose Senate Bill 930 from Scott Weiner, which would allow select cities in California to issue permits extending the cutoff time for alcohol sales to 4 a.m which could lead to an increased incident of drunk driving and exacerbate the noise and or traffic disturbance suffered by residents living in abutting cities and force neighboring cities and or counties to absorb increased public safety enforcement costs. This motion is also to be submitted as a separate community impact statement to council file 22-002-S 106. Um, and let me just say, I looked this up in the state and the Senate bill failed on August 24th, but that doesn't mean it can't come back again before midnight. And then the governor could have a chance to sign. So this is still relevant um, and, and brought to the LA's attention um, by Councilman Koretz, who, whose district borders most of West Hollywood, where this would be one of the cities where they would um, have the bars open until four. Um, and, and I must say, as someone who's out driving sometimes for work between three and five in the morning, um, I, you know, between two and three, you see the drunks. You really do on the freeway. I don't want them to be out there another two hours. And when you get towards 5 a.m. is when parents are starting to take kids to schools that are maybe far, you know, some kids go to school an hour away. We just don't need the drunks out on the road any later than they are now. Go ahead, Scott. Thank you, Barry. Uh, we're gonna go now to public comment on this agenda item, if you're a member of the public and you'd like to comment on this, please raise your hand. Not seeing any hands from the public. Public comment is closed. Back to the board before we vote. Does anyone from the board wanna make a comment or a question regarding this? It was just a no brainer. I can make a comment quickly. Please. As, as a former um, criminal defense attorney, uh, nothing good happens after 2 a.m. I would just concur with what with Barry's sentiment. Richard? I agree. I don't want to have blood alleys, people going from the place where it's not permitted to find a, a bar in a city that is permitted. That idea causes more traffic problems and accidents. Thanks, Richard. Not seeing any more hands. Let's vote on this one. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so we're voting on item 10A. Kim Clements? Yes. Dean Fettler? Absent. Brenda Freed? Absent. Ira Gold? Yes. Jeff Harwick? Yes. Julie Houlihan? Yes. Scott Mandel? Yes. Chip Meehan? Yes. Brandon Marino? Yes. Richard Niederberg? Yes. Karen Soros absent, Adam Summers absent, Alexa Steinberg? Yes. Ari Velasco? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, mm -hmm. moving on to motion B, the Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SENC, opposes Council File 22-1100-S5, a ballot measure on the November 8, 2022 ballot which has no dollar amount listed for the cost of developing, constructing, or acquiring up to 5,000 additional units of low-cost rental housing in each of the 15 council districts. This motion is also to be submitted as a community impact statement, CIS, to CF 22-1100-S5. Um, the Government Affairs Committee came across this. Um, it may be that when the voter information pamphlet gets mailed out, maybe they'll tell us what a yes vote means in terms of cost. But I think when the city council voted to put it on the ballot, they should have initially said what their proposed costs were. So we need to nudge them a bit on this before we all have to vote on it. Scott. Thanks, Barry. We're going to now go to public comment on this item. If you're a member of the public and you'd like to comment on the agenda item that you just heard, please raise your hand. I'm not seeing any hands up. Public comment is closed to the board. Brandon, go ahead. Is Ruth still on the line? Uh, this, th this is exactly what she was talking about the last time. So if Ruth is here, I'd love to hear what she has to say about this. But um, no, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, it's 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 like this. It's like a, a broken record. They they don't put a dollar amount. They 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 don't. They give us. They gave us the least amount of information, and they ask for our vote instead of giving us more than enough information, and then ask for our vote. And no, it's it's the same old, same old. Yeah. And we're not taking a, a stand on more housing. We're just saying we want to know how much we're being asked to spend. That's all. Any other board comment before we vote? Not seeing any. Let's please vote for this. Okay, so we're voting on uh, 10B. Kim Clements? Yes. Dean Cutler, absent. Randall Freed, absent. Ira Gold? Yes. Jeff Harwick? Yes. Julie Houlihan? Yes. Scott Mandel? Yes. Cheat Meehan? Yep. Brennan Marino? Yes. Richard Niederberg? Yes. Karen Soros, absent. Adam Summers, absent. Alexa Steinberg? Yes. Peggy, um, Abigail Velasco? Yes. Motion passes. And the last GAC motion, motion C, says the Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, opposes Council File 22-0158 from Bonin, Rahman, and Harris Dawson, which would allow shelters and other forms of interim housing to be established and operated on properties located outside of R3, RAS3, R4, RAS4, R5, C2, C4, C5, CM, M1, M2, and M3 zones during a declared shelter crisis. This motion is also be, to be submitted as a separate community impact statement to CF22-0158. And um, for all of you that may not be familiar with all the various zone codes, the ones that are listed here are all the, all, like R3 and up, those are all like multifamily units where 
it would be allowed now. And the C class uh, zoning is commercial and the M is manufacturing. So this would allow interim housing to be an R1 and R2 and R1.5 um, zones, um, which, you know, we, ha we have, I believe we have enough areas already we can build the interim housing without going into single family neighborhoods. Scott? Thank you, Barry. We're now going to go to public comment on the motion you just heard. If you're a member of the public, please raise your hand. Call in user number one. Go ahead, please. Call in user one. Hello? Yes, we hear you now. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I have my headphones on with the microphone. Okay, so yeah, I don't think we should be building interim housing anywhere. Like, what's a tent? It's an interim housing. Like, we need permanent houses. Everyone needs a permanent house. Like, permanent houses are interim housing when they have short-term leases, right? Like, why are we not doing permanent housing? I don't understand that. When, when you uh, prohibit... Um, sheltering and interim housing in areas, you get a tent zone everywhere in the whole city, you know? Um, I The only thing I would object to would be if this were tied to some sort of involuntary acceptance of shelter with the only alternative being jail. Like when they say that, okay, you could sleep in that church. So if you don't sleep in that church, we're going to arrest you. I, I don't think that, that, that this should be weaponized like that. But that's the only objection I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public care to comment on this agenda item? Please raise your hand. Not seeing any hands. Public comment is closed. Any board members like to comment before we vote? We can vote. Okay, we're voting on motion 10C. Kim Clements? Yes. Then Cutler is absent. Randa Freed absent. Ira Gold? Yes. Jeff Harwick? Yes. Julie Houlihan? Yes. Scott Mandel? Yes. Chip Meehan? Yes. Brandon Marino? Yes. Richard Naderberg? Yes. Karen Soros absent. Adam Summers absent. Alexis Steinberg? Yes. Ari Velasco, yes, motion passes. Thank you, Barry. Moving on to item 11, public safety, Jeff. Thanks, Scott. I apologize in advance for the length of this particular motion, so I will try to read it as quickly as possible. Motion the board of the Studio City Neighbor Council as CNC requests council members Rahman and Krikorian bring forth a resolution opposing the policies and special directives of Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon. There's been a crime surge in Los Angeles since the initiation of DA Gascon's policies and directives from misdemeanors to violent felonies. DA Gascon's newly instituted policies and directives have unquestionably contributed to this surge. For example, DA Gascon issued Special Directive 20 07, which lists numerous misdemeanors that are generally declined or dismissed before arraignment, including resisting arrest, drinking in public, public intoxication, trespassing, and drug and paraphernalia possession. This has led directly to the non-enforcement of quality of life crimes throughout the city. Special Directive 20-08 eliminated certain sentencing enhancements for career criminals, including the three strikes law and gang enhancements. DA Gascon, only modify that policy after a judge issued a preliminary injunction against it for non-compliance with state law. Our DA refuses to enforce cash bail under special directive 20-06, which has resulted in a revolving door policy of repeat criminals being set free only to commit more crime while waiting trial. 
Only after a few high profile violent felony cases did he agree to consider cash bail in rare circumstances. D.A. Gascon, quote, will not defend existing death penalty cases, close quote, under special directive 20 11, even though California voters support the death penalty. He refuses to send prosecutors to parole hearings. D.A. Gascon, refuses to try juvenile offenders in adult court, no matter how heinous the crime. A man recently arrested for the slaying of a homeless man had been released from prison last year after just serving eight years of a life sentence for double murder because DA Gascon refused to transfer the case from juvenile to adult court. DA Gascon's dangerous policies and special directives continue to endanger all Angelinos and residents and stakeholders of Studio City are concerned about the DA's non-prosecution of crimes that affect our quality of life. Our laws must be enforced, not undermined by the DA. The time is now for the city council to support the repeal of these dangerous, ill-conceived, and even unlawful policies of DA Gascon. The safety, well-being, and quality of life for all Angelinos are at stake. And I've linked uh, many different things that deal with all the different special directives that uh, go right to the to DA Gascon's website uh, and, and sets forth those particular directives. And that's it. Thanks, Jeff. We're going to now go to public comment on the motion you just heard. Call in user one, please go ahead. Call in user one, please unmute. Hi, okay. This motion is ridiculous. Um, if you click on the article about the Pacoima homeless man getting murdered, it literally says that the guy in the article they're talking about that did a double homicide as a juvenile didn't rob or kill the homeless guy. Okay. Um, there was a homeless guy that was murdered here in Studio City recently. Um, I told Studio City Neighborhood Council that in the area where this murder happened, the lights have been out since 2019. And they don't have a description. They haven't um, arrested this man, as far as I know, or this, these people that did this. Um, there was another victim that he almost killed that I believe was released from the hospital full of cuts and stitches and now blind, at least in one eye, onto the streets with his attacker. Okay, there are things you can do that keep people safe and I've been asking you to Time do them and you do not. Excuse me? Just mentioning time, please conclude your comments. Okay, so yes, um, Gaston is not what doesn't, what makes us unsafe. What makes us unsafe is when people don't listen to us when we ask specifically for the things we need, like lighting and housing. Thank you. Anybody else from the public who'd like to comment on this, please raise your hand. Not seeing any more hand up. Oh, Patrice, go ahead, please. Patrice, please unmute yourself. I just want to say that it is totally well written. Thanks, Jeff. Anybody else from the public here to comment on this item? Not seeing any hands. Public comment is closed. Richard Niederberg. Yeah, it seems to me that this is going to have very little effect. We're advisors to a municipal corporation called City of LA. We have nothing to do with the LA County which is administrative subdivision of California. So I think we'd be spinning our wheels. I'm not that I'm opposed to the whole idea. I just think we're spinning our wheels in spending time on this particular issue. Brandon? Yeah, just um, doubling back to something Ruth said. Um, some of the lights over here on Ventura Boulevard just um, west of Coldwater have been out for a while. And according to CD4, it takes a minimum of two months for Streets LA to go out there and actually fix them. And um, yeah, that's one thing we really do need to focus on when it comes to public safety, figuring out um, 
if Streets LA can get more of a budget to actually get to these lights a lot quicker because it does get it's getting dark a lot earlier now and um, it's getting um, it's getting more unsafe out there especially when a row of street lights are out so I just wanted to comment on what Ruth said thank you I run actually I wanted to to uh, ask Ruth if she would send an email just with um, with that lights the the request just to mention which area in particular. I know, Brandon, you just mentioned. But if there are anything else, Ruth, that you mentioned that um, you think we can help get uh, situated, like any lights turned on, anything like that, um, I haven't seen an email. So please do send us one, and uh, we'll see if we can help. Thanks. Thanks, Ira. Any other board comments on this item before we go to vote? By the way, I actually rode my bike along the river wash uh, the other night between Laurel Canyon Boulevard in Witsit, and it is pitch dark. There isn't a single light on that uh, river wash. So it is, and that's where the- uh, where Scott, the I have a, Scott, I have a question regarding yeah. that. Is that city or county, those lights? I would assume they would be county, the um, river wash, correct? <laughs> is there, or did, are, are there, is it a juggling match? Like, well, it's not ours. I mean, and, who's As I understand it, and Jeff can correct me, it's county land that is maintained by the city. That's correct. Along, along the Greenway, that's that's the case. Yeah. The city actually has, by a, a special agreement, um, control over that area, which includes maintenance. Richard? Yeah, I've had some luck before in lights under freeway underpasses by contacting uh, Caltrans District 7 at their office. Um, I was able to get lights replaced on the Odin Street underpassing of the 101 freeway. So it is possible by going to the right agency. In this case, it was Caltrans, uh, but I'm sure there's other ones also. Bye. Thank you, Richard. Any other board members care to comment before we vote? So let's vote. Okay, so we're voting on um, item 11A, Kim Clements. Yes. Dean Cutler is absent. Randall Freed absent. Ara Gold? Yes. Jeff Harwick? Yes. Julie Houlihan? Yes. Scott Mandel? Yes. Chief Meehan? Yep. Brandon Marino? Yes. Richard Nitterberg? Yes. Karen Soros absent. Adam Summers absent. Alexis Steinberg? Yes. Abby Velasco? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you for that, everyone. Let's move on to motion B. The Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council as CNC Supports Council File 22-0779. Title, Cyber Attacks, Critical Infrastructure, Artificial Intelligence, Cybersecurity, Defense, Advanced Research, Projects Agency, DARPA, National Security Commission on AI, NSCAI. In the past year, large cities across the United States have been targeted by state-sponsored and other malicious cyber actors that threaten the public's security and privacy. It is worrisome that the city of Los Angeles's critical infrastructure is potentially at risk, including departments such as the Department of Water and Power, Port of LA, and the police and fire departments. It therefore makes sense for the city's information and technology agency uh, to report to the city council on security measures and protocols that are in place to detect cyber attacks and that the report include a comprehensive review of the city's IT asset management capabilities and recommendations for improvement. This motion is also to be submitted as a community impact statement CIS to council file 22 dash 0779. Um, I know this deals with something that's a little bit out of the area for public safety, but I guess it's close enough. And uh, we always hear about all these attacks and whatnot to, to uh, electric power grids and things of that nature. So it makes sense to get the ITA to do a report about just how good our, our systems are. And um, our council member has seconded this particular motion. So that's a good, good thing to support. Thanks. 
Thank you, Jeff. Going to public comment on this agenda item. If you're in the public and would like to make comment on this, please raise your hand. Not seeing any hands, public comment is closed. Back to the board. Does anyone have a comment or a question regarding the motion that Jeff just read about cyber security, cyber attacks? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, let's vote. Okay, so we're voting on motion 11B. Kim Clements? Yes. Dean Cutler, absent. Randa Freed, absent. Ira Gold? Yes. Jeff Hartwick? Yes. Julie Houlihan? Yes. Scott Mandel? Yes. Chief Meehan? Yes. Brenda Marino? Yes. Richard Niederberg? Yes. Karen Soros absent. Adam Summers absent. Alexis Steinberg? Yes. Abby Velasco? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to item 12. Bylaws and procedures. We'll continue with Jeff. Thank you for that. Uh, these are a little bit shorter than the others. So uh, motion number one, the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, approves amending operating procedures, article one governing board, section one duties and powers, paragraph C as follows. Quote, section one, duties and powers. And um, it just skips down to subparagraph C. Each board member shall use a SCNC email address for all business of the SCNC. So basically what we're doing is requiring all board members to use the official Studio City um, um, email address. So you can use your, your Gmail or that sort of thing. And the reason for that is just for public records requests, it, it, it um, is more efficient that way. And it actually protects board members from unnecessary privacy intrusions into their, their personal emails if they use that for Studio City Neighborhood Council business. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Moving to public comment on the rule change that you just heard. If you're a member from the public and like to comment on that, please raise your hand. Peter Cole, go ahead, please. Hi, I think it's a good idea. Uh, for example, uh, when I'm waiting for hell to freeze over and get Brandon's apology, and since I think the best way for Brandon to apologize would be to do it on a board email, since it's not a personal issue, it's a board uh, issue. And I think everybody would like, everybody in the city would like to do a PRA on that and frame it when that apology comes. So I think, it, I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you for that. Anybody else from the public care to comment? Raise your hand. Barry, was your hand up and then it went down? No? Okay. Chip, uh, public comments now closed in this item. We'll go to the board comments. Chip, go ahead. I just have a protocol question on this, and really a process. I, I think it's a great idea that, <clears throat> that we have this and it's no problem to initiate conversation from my neighborhood council uh, account. But if I get someone forwarding something to me on my Gmail account where I had a relationship before I was on the board, <clears throat> I will respond and probably CC myself on the neighborhood council board. I mean, how do you end up, how have you all ended up morphing business to the business email address and kind of keep your personal one clean? That's a good point, Chip. What I've always done was when people mix up my email addresses, I will copy the email, put it into the SCNC email and continue from the SCNC email address. If that makes sense, Abby. No, it does. And that's what I've been doing. It just seems like it's the only way to do it. It just, it still creates breadcrumbs into a private Gmail account. Sure. But I'm not initiating anything in a private account, so. 
Thanks. Uh, just a quick question. Um, the my mind just went blank. Uh, so, board members, we do have a uh, an SCSNC email account. What about those uh, the chairs that are not uh, elective chairs? Do they have also um, a neighborhood council email account? I'll answer that. I uh, Luis Oliar was a chair of the former chair of the homelessness committee, and he did have his Studio City NC email address and account. And then when he left the committee, it it was um, suspended the the email address. So would only board members be required to use their um, SCNC email account, but not the other the, the chairs that are part of still the neighborhood council? Or no, council? this this deals of this deals of board members. No, only for board members. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other board comments or Kim, go ahead. I actually think it would be a great idea if the chairs as well had a, a uniform email address. I myself had didn't know how to reach out to someone, didn't realize that that chairs, this was early on, didn't necessarily have the same email address. And I think it went into a black hole, which is why I wasn't hearing from somebody. So I, I think it would be a great idea. It's not, uh, I don't know if we, if this is the place to add it, but it'd be, if it's good, something to think about. Thanks. Thanks, Kim. That's a, a good point. What we, I think the, the purpose at this particular point is to see how the board reacts to mandatory uh, SCNC emails and then slowly bring the committees into it while we also look for a cheaper alternative for our SCNC email addresses, which we're now paying for. This actually, the board tried to pass this a few years ago and the board rejected it. And that's why it says that they may use an SCNC email address. So we're, we're starting with the board and then we'll move on to committee. And this actually came to a head a couple of years ago when a board member was attempted he had an attempted censure because he didn't have an S, he wasn't using an SCNC email address. So there was no distinction between his uh, public persona and his private persona. And this actually, as Jeff articulated quite well, protects everybody. So we know when you're speaking as the SCNC or whether you're just a private individual. If anybody else has any questions before we Barry, did you have your hand up before and I didn't uh, get to you for public comment on this item? Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. All, all I was gonna say is I volunteer for the SCNC, the SCRA beautification, um, um, the um, SCRA's Save Weddington thing. And I'm not going to have a ton of different email addresses. You all know my email address, and I am not going to more than one place to get my email. So quit trying to go there with me, all of you. Thank you. Thanks for that, Barry. Uh, this is strictly for board members, so don't worry. Continue using your email address. Not seeing any more board member comments, questions, let's go to a vote on this uh, operating procedures change. Okay, so we're voting on item 12-1. Uh, Kim Clements. Yes. Dean Cutler is absent. Randa Freed, absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Harwick. Yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Pick me hand. Yep. Brandon Marino? Yes. Richard, Richard Nitterberg? Yes. Karen Soros absent. Adam Summers absent. Alexa Steinberg? Yes. Abby Velasco? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you for that. Moving on to 12 2. 
Motion, the Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, approves amending operating procedures, Article 1, Governing Board, Section 4, Absences, as follows. Quote, Section 4, uh, Absences A, some paragraph A, a board member who incurs an absence at three regularly scheduled board meetings during any 12-month period may be removed by action of the board. Subparagraph B, attendance shall be recorded in all meeting minutes. So as it stands right now in our bylaws, what our bylaws say is a board member may be removed from the board upon unexcused absences as outlined in the operating procedures. Then you go to the operating procedures and it discusses um, the number of unexcused absences. So. I've looked at other neighborhood councils, how they do it. They don't really distinguish between excuse and unexcuse because there's a lot of discretion in terms of what does excuse mean? Uh, you know, you, you've got a, a job to do, uh, someone's in a hospital, um, you know, or, or you just feel like a day off. So there's a lot of discretion there in terms of what the, uh, the chair or the SCNC determines as excuse, I think we should just default it to three different um, absences during this time period. And then you give it to the board to have discretion in terms of what you want to do about it. Obviously, if someone has recurring health issues or something like that, the, the board can give some leeway. So um, it's not shall language, it's may do this. But I think we need to be more in line with other neighbor councils on this and just stay away from excuse and unexcused because, I mean, for all intents and purposes, every absence is gonna be probably labeled excuse. So it really won't make a difference if a person misses three, four, five, six different meetings. At some point we need to, to be held accountable because we are elected and we are serving the stakeholders and it's not fair to them if there's a board member who's not really pulling their weight and showing up at meetings and whatnot. So uh, we went through committee and that's what we determined would be probably appropriate language. So I will leave it at that for public and board comment. Thanks, Jeff. Going to public comment on this agenda item. If you're a member of the public and would like to comment, please raise your hand. You will have one minute to speak. Peter, go ahead, please. That took a while. Um, I don't know how hard it would be for a board member to email the president to say, I can't make a meeting. I don't know how many board members just don't show up. So I think the difference between excused and unexcused is uh, at least you make the effort to have an explanation why you can't show, but if you just don't show because you don't feel like it, then bye-bye. Thank you. Any other members from the public would like to comment, please raise your hand. Not seeing any more hands, public comment is closed. Richard, go ahead, please. I know there's no delineation between regularly scheduled meetings and continuations of regularly scheduled meetings that we're at today, right now. Yeah, I think I believe we addressed that issue in, in committee. Um, the The difference is is that uh, a board meeting is something that's regularly scheduled on on the calendar, and everyone can clear their calendars months in advance. If it's a special board meeting. Uh, it's special. It's not routine. So therefore, people may not be able to make it due to other commitments on the short notice, like the meeting tonight. So I think there needs to be a, a differentiation in terms of special and regular. Thanks. Thank you. Brandon. I'm about to go battle with an, um, a committee that's full of legal minds. Um, any 12 month period, I would assume that's consecutive, that you're not gonna break it up in pieces. Um, obviously it's consecutive, but do you think it would be wise to place any consecutive 12 month period 
Is that something that should be there? Or do you think it's just obvious that we are grouping months in 12 month periods and we're not piecemealing it? You can do it on fiscal year. I'm not sure how to how to answer that. I um, because we were all elected in June of 2021, so I would imagine that the 12 the 12 month period would begin at that time. Um, I suppose we could add language just that states that meeting uh, um, of the new board from the period of this because June 22nd is our election day, so we'll be seated in sometime in July this time around. So but the the other problem with that is if we do it that way, uh, we have we have people that join the board at different time periods. So they may resign and then a new board member will be elected in their stead. So then, then it will be a different period. It wouldn't be fair to that person to, to have the, the 12, you know, three months into their, um, their term. I'm to, talking about a consecutive 12 month period, like say um, Chip, who was just um, uh, uh, appointed um, a couple months ago. Um, his 12 month period obviously began when he was appointed and it'll extend to the following year of the month he was appointed. But um, that would be a consecutive 12 month period. I know it sounds ridiculous what I'm saying right now, but I'm thinking ahead to um, you know future boards who I don't think they would abuse it. However, putting consecutive in there um, and grouping the 12, 12 months together in a linear consecutive fashion Again, I don't know if it's necessary. It just popped up into my head. I looked at that. I said, shouldn't the word consecutive be in there? But maybe it's just me. Uh, Chip. Okay, Richard, then Chip. How about just playing fiscal years to go on the neighborhood council year that the all 99 years start, 99 councils start and end the same time in June, beginning of July. So that way it would, 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 would just about everybody, as far as I could see, it would be consistent. Chip? What if you just put language in that called it uh, three months, three absences during any 12 month service year? And then that would sort of fall. Then, then there's always going to be an interpretation. If someone, if the board wants somebody out and they want to stay and they're going to fight about it, they're going to play semantics with an attorney. But I mean, perhaps that would work. Calling it a service year. Works for me. Alexa? I think if you call it a service year, you, you have to then define service year. I think you need to use a term that is colloquial that anybody can put together. And I agree with Brandon and would even go so far as to make a friendly amendment as to adding the word consecutive 12 months. It's any 12 months, June to June, July, July, April to April. Um, I, I think that that makes it clear and makes, leaves less room for error um, and less room for argument. Do we have a second on amending the motion? Adding I'll second it. I'll second it. Okay. Public comment on that amendment, adding the word consecutive. Anyone from the public like to comment before we vote on that amendment? Raise your hand. Not seeing any hands, back to the board. Raise your hand if you want to discuss adding the word consecutive. Kim? Oh, your hand was up. Are we done with general comments or the general comments on this? We're, well, now we're, we're talking about adding the word consecutive because the amendment okay. came up. Okay, and then we'll go back to general comments or that's been closed. So don't we usually vote on this amendment and then vote on the motion? Correct. Patrice, you had your hand up for the 
public comment. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just curious. So is this going to go back or it just starts today if you guys go ahead and pass this? Or will it take into account some of the board members that have missed numerous meetings in the past year? Thank you. That's an interesting question. If it's retroactive from when we, it probably is not retroactive, but uh, I'll leave that to the lawyers. Richard? Yeah, I don't think you can make it retroactive. No. I think it it starts from, from the point uh, that it gets voted in because it's it's purpose to fix a problem that we had. You can't punish people in, in hindsight and backwards. Is that an ex post facto? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why I wanted to have it to be a fiscal year because that's how the years of neighborhood councils are. July 1st to June 30th, well, when it comes to budgeting, elections, and everything else, why not just adopt the same year that Dunn has? And Kim, your hand is up. Yeah, I just I didn't get a chance to comment on the motion at all, which I wanted to bring up the fact that um, this could by bringing it in front of the board and having it in an open meeting uh, and not distinguishing between excused or unexcused, it opens up if someone does have an issue, health issues or whatnot, they might be fighting for their position uh, out in public and and having to air private life. I'm not sure that this is a great way to go. Julie? Yeah, I'm not sure if I can express very well that, but I'm uncomfortable with the motion. I'm not saying I'm fully against it. I'm curious if anybody else is against it um, because we are talking about missing board meetings, but it doesn't take into account, you know, people who might, attend a lot of committee meetings or they might be active in another way and for some reason have to miss some board meetings so whether they're excused or unexcused we're taking that off the table and then once you've missed three meetings you're sort of at the mercy of the other board members to vote you up or down you know it seems a little less clear to me now it you know, it, it, it's less clear. It's like you're, you put yourself in a vulnerable spot and how are people gonna vote for you? I don't know, I'm, I'm just, I'm a little uncomfortable with the motion, but I don't know how to express it better. They're gonna let what's-his-face bodybuilder off the hook. Jeff? Well, there has to be some some metric by which, uh, you know, a board member has to be held accountable for missing a number of meetings, um, and and I, I think this is probably the best way to do it. Most other neighborhood councils that I took a look at in terms of their bylaws, three was the magic number. Some were four, some were three. So that's what I I. I suggested, and that's what the committee passed. Um, and also, this is not mandatory. There's discretion because it says the person may be removed by action of the board. It doesn't mean it, it, there's no shall language. So there's some flexibility to take into account personal emergencies and things like that. And I, I would just add that if a person is unable to, to do their duties for a lengthy period of time, then perhaps uh, someone who's more capable of, of of showing up should be able to to do that instead. So I guess that that would be my response. Chip and then Alexa. Um, taking excused and unexcused off the table does create a vulnerability. Um, maternity is something that came to mind. Um, but there are health and other issues. Uh, I think we need to have excused absences um, so someone can go to the president and say, I've got this situation and I can't be here. And, um, and a consideration can be made at the same time the president could be disciplining saying, 
this is your third consecutive one because you're going surfing. This does not work for us. Um, it becomes an HR issue, right? I mean, Kim, wouldn't that sort of fix it? I mean, there has to be a way for someone to explain why they're missing in a private setting that is confidential. And I would assume that would be a board member going to the president. So according to Dunn, uh, we have to change our procedures anyway. They highly recommend, but they don't insist on doing away with excused and unexcused. They strongly suggest not to have that even in there. Now, if we're gonna put excused, then we have to write very clearly what an excused absence is and is not. And then we have to stick with that. And I think what uh, Jeff is trying to do in this motion is to, I mean, whatever, not to sound cold, but whatever the excuse is, if you're missing a lot of board meetings, it, you probably should leave the board for whatever the reason, whether it is uh, health or other issues, if you can't perform, you should go. And the way we have it now, all someone has to do is say, I'm not gonna be there and that's considered excuse. So theoretically, any one of us can go, I'm busy until next June and I will be missing all the board meetings. They are, according to our precedent, those are excused. So I think this is pretty fair. It offers up the due process and- Can it, I point of order you, um, yeah. Mr. President? We are still just talking about the um, amendment, not the actual motion. Of yeah, the we, yeah, but we kind of went off I know. Uh, so we're just talking about the amendment right now, whether or not we're going to add that word or not. The the the, cal the the calendar year. So okay, I tell you what, are we ready to vote? If I'm I'm adding the uh, word consecutive, and then we'll go back to the motion. Okay, so let me just be clear. Who brought up the motion, uh, the amendment motion? I did. Alexa. Uh, Alexa. Okay, and Brandon seconded. Yes, I did. Okay, so we are, should we put consecutive or not? Is that the motion? Okay. Uh, Kim Clements. Yes. Dean Cutler is absent. Randa Freed, absent. Ira Gold. Nope. Jeff Hartwick. Yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Uh, Scott Mandel? Yes. Cheat me here? Sure. Brandon Marino? Yes. Richard Nitter Nitterberg? Yeah. Karen Soros absent. Alexa Steinberg? Yes. Adam Summer is absent. Abby Velasco, yes. Motion passes to add the word consecutive. Great. Uh, Jeff, would you mind reading it again with the word consecutive? We'll go to public comment and then we'll go back to the board. Sure. The board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, approves amending operating procedures, Article 1, Governing Board, Section 4, absences as follows. Quote Section 4, absences, subparagraph A, a board member who incurs an absence at least three at, a, at <laughs> I'm sorry, at three regularly scheduled board meetings during any uh, 12 month, let's say any consecutive 12 month period may be removed by action of the board. Subparagraph B, attendance shall be recorded in all meeting minutes, close quote. Thank you, Jeff. Now for anyone from the public, any of you too, like to comment on this, raise your hand. If not, public comment is closed. Back to the board, Alexa. I think it's important to keep in mind the intent of this motion. And the intent is to empower the board to be able to take action um, in, in really dealing with a, a board member who is not contributing and is not showing up and is not, um, you know, fulfilling their their duties and their responsibilities, as they said they would when they were elected. Um, it's something that is, uh, as as Jeff reiterated, a 
uh, an option. It is empowering the board. It is not a mandatory thing. It's not a requirement. It simply places power in the hands of the board to deal with, um, if you will, a, a dud member. Um, so I don't, while I, I do feel that everybody's comments are um, very well thought through that there potentially could be issues of, um, you know, members that very well do have very good reasons for not being at, you know, three board meetings consecutively within 12 month period. Um, I don't think that's not the intent of the language here. And I, I have to believe that, um, a board empowered with the ability to do something about these absences wouldn't act against somebody in a situation where um, they truly had an, an issue not to be at the board meetings. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, I note that when, when it was read, you came up saying consecutive 12 month period rather than saying consecutive board meetings. Was that the intent? It's not the same. The word consecutive is placed after the word any. Okay, so it's not any three except your board meetings, it is any three board meeting in a consecutive 12 month period. Is that correct? Correct. Not the same. Okay. I think we're now ready to vote on this. Okay, so we're voting on the actual, with the revised motion 12 to Kim Clements. Yes, and after all the votes, I'm going to have to drop off, so I hope you'll all excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dean Cutler is absent. Randa Freed absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Harwick. Yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Chip Meehan. <laughs> yes. Got it. Brandon Marino. Yes. Richard Nitterberg? Yes. Karen Soros absent. Adam Summers absent. Alexis Steinberg? Yes. Abby Velasco, yes. Motion passes. All right, moving right along to 12 3. The Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, approves amending operating procedures, Article 3. Committees and their duties, section one, standing committees, paragraph J6, quote, sub, subparagraph six, committee members other than chairs and board members shall be removed in the same manner in which they were appointed. However, chairs and board members shall be removed from a committee by the president only after the president or a board member submits a removal motion to the board and a majority of the board votes for removal, close quote. That is the motion. And we've already passed a version of this. The only difference between this motion and the one we passed several months ago is the word shall. So we replaced may with shall. And I, I think Scott could give me some insight, give us rather some insight in terms of why that makes sense. Thanks. Sure, I'll give you a, just a brief explanation. Imagine that the board votes to remove a committee chair, unanimous, unanimously votes to move, remove a committee chair or a board member from a committee for whatever the reason is. And then I say, hey, well, I'm the president, I may do it, it's my discretion and I'm gonna override and veto what the board did and not remove the person that the board voted to remove. That's where the may turns to shall. This is based on a real life conversation. And it's something I wouldn't even consider doing uh, 
vetoing what the board did, but I may not be president for life and I think it should be changed. So the board, so the wishes of the board will continue without the veto of the president. That being said, public comment on that item is open. Goat, you have one minute. <laughs> Where the hell were you? <laughs> oh, I was destroying developers at the Lincoln Heights NC. <laughs> yes, this is the stop, Brandon, from becoming the next Randall E. Fraud Free Chicken Jr. Yes, it's to control him. As Scott might be declared mentally incompetent one day, and then Brandon would assume the presidency under the 25th Amendment. <laughs> yes, we're going to keep him in check. Keep all of you in check, because Scott doesn't trust any of you. That's one thing that we've taught, Scott. Never trust these people, Scott. Today, they're your little friends. Tomorrow, they're Lisa Kardashian and White. <laughs> I fully support this. And I hope that Randall Fried Chicken will agree with me that the time to reign in the power has now arrived. Democracy and freedom will once again reign. Please conclude your comments. On Ventura Boulevard and Coanga and Coanga. <laughs> Thank you. Not seeing any more hands from the public. Public comment is closed on this item. To the board. No comments, no questions, no hands. I think we can go vote on this one. We are now voting on 12-3. King Clements is absent. Dean Cutler absent. Randall Freed absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Hartwick. Yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Chip Meehan. Chip. Yes, no. Yes. Thank you. Brendan Marino? Yes. Richard Niederberg? Yes. Karen Soros absent. Adam Summers absent. Alexis Steinberg? Yes. Ivan Velasco? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you for that. Moving to the next, number four. Motion the Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, approves amending operating procedures, Article 4, meeting Section 2, Agenda, Paragraph E, as follows, quote, subparagraph E, a general description of an item on the agenda shall be provided, close quote. Right now, the way it is, is a brief general description of an item on the agenda generally need not exceed 20 words. So we're removing the suggestion of 20 words because some, some motions, including the, the Gasco motion that we, we just passed a few moments ago, um, required a little bit of a, a more lengthy introduction and that was placed on the agenda. And 20, 20 words would not have sufficed to, to do it justice. So I, I just believe it gives the board flexibility in putting things on the agenda uh, so that the uh, stakeholders are more adequately informed with a more detailed explanation than, than a short summary. That's all, thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Going to public comment on the motion you just heard. Goat, go ahead, please. <laughs> yes, of course, if Brandon had to raise his hook. Yes, again, this is to keep him in check, to keep the evil in check, as we want transparency to reign in freedom into this neighborhood council so we don't go back to the bad days when certain board members were at the bar after the meeting, almost barfing in their drinks, talking about goats and puppets, imaginary creatures that don't really exist. <laughs> Yes, the day has come, hasn't it? The day of reckoning. And where is Randall E. Fraud Freed Chicken Jr. hiding away instead of being here tonight on this historic evening of the restoration of democracy for the SCNC? Yes, it's a great night. Send him the recording. 
we miss him. We want him here. <laughs> that's so nice. And yes, that's we're, all yes. we're all coming together. We're all coming together. Thank you for that. Not seeing any more hands. Public comment is closed. Over to board comment. Brandon, go ahead, please. I think the 20 word description was taken from the Ralph M. Brown Act. It's a minimum, I believe, the Brown Act defines is to um, uh, the bare minimum that um, it need not exceed 20. But I think it was, I don't know if it was a suggestion on the Ralph M. Brown Act or not. But um, yeah, a lot of our motions, it's you you have to go into greater detail so i'm all for this thank you richard yeah there's a problem here may not actually surface but it makes it very easy for people to object to stuff after they've requested their pra by having these long explanations like we had to deal with our da um you get one thing wrong and they can really give you a hassle after they get a PRA of having a hundred words or so. It seems to me that it causes it can cause problems for us if we if we allow stuff of that length. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Any more board comments or questions on this change? Let's vote. So we're voting on 12-4. Kim Clements is absent. Dean Cutler absent. Randall Freed absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Hartwick. Yes. Billy Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Pete Meehan. Yes. Brenda Marino. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Soros absent. Adam Summers absent. Alexis Steinberg. Yes. Adam Velasco. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving to number five, the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, approves amending operating procedures, Article 4 meetings, Section 2 agenda by adding paragraph F, quote, subparagraph F. The president shall place on the board meeting agenda all timely submitted motions, resolutions, and requests for action proposed by one, board members, or two, passed by committees unless an item explicitly violates a bylaw, operating procedure, or done city rule or ordinance, close quote. We're basically adding a, a little subparagraph there. And again, I will, I will defer to Scott to more fully describe the necessity for this kind of provision. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, board presidents of the past have kept duly passed motions from committees or motions proposed by board members off the agenda. Uh, again, another veto. I wouldn't do that. Any motion that comes to me is gonna go on the, the agenda, even if it's a hundred words. Uh, I think it's important to not let the president have the power to veto. This is actually based on a real life conversation I've had where I was told that the president sets the agenda and something I wanted to bring forth was not going to be put on an agenda. So this closes that loophole, stops the presidential veto and allows the motions that our hardworking committees and board members bring forward to be addressed by the board and not die like a pocket veto. Goat, go ahead, please. <laughs> yes. And another abuse by Randall Fraud. <laughs> and of course, Brandon was thinking, hey, I could use that when I become president through some sort of default. But sorry, we're stopping that loophole too. Yes, the democratic movement and restoration continues tonight. And this historic evening, as we all come together, animals, lobbyists, developers, and even Brandon, <laughs> who's been put in his little box to be contained. As long as Scott can be here, he can be contained. But beware, everybody. That cat will come out of the bag again. And I will have to go back in person in those meetings when it happens. 
to gnaw on free delicious food and give my public statements to protect the SCNC from not only you, but from itself. It's become a bad creature of habit. A good Please job. Please conclude your yeah. thoughts. <laughs> yes, whoever that was, human, I'm, I will submit it, yes, for the vote. Thank you. Call in user two. Unmute yourself, please. Hi. Can you hear me? We can hear you, speaker. Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, I my phone um, died, and I just wanted to comment about the the rule that says um, that you have to be like present at the meeting and um, and not call into them. I think that hybrid meetings are really, really, really important for accessibility and equity and um, that like remote and hybrid meetings should always be an option. Um, I know that like there's people that are disabled or, or people that have, you know, life problems like, you know, kids and like things that they can't necessarily go to a meeting. They don't have a car maybe. And I think it's really important to preserve the option of participating fully as a board member, um, even if they have to do it remotely. Thank you. Anybody else from the comment public here to comment on this particular agenda item? Not seeing any more hands. Public comment is closed. Brandon? Yeah, question was a wildlife ordinance motion passed by some by um, sustainability and um, even if it wasn't passed if Adele brought it to you saying can we just bring it to the board would this motion basically order you to bring the wildlife ordinance to a board meeting yes correct which I did because of the nature of that motion and because of communications with uh, multiple members of the committee that passed it it was suggested for a very good reason that the wildlife ordinance be a special meeting and not put on a regular scheduled board meeting item due to the number of participants that would likely take place and the one to two hours of public comment. So I called for a special meeting and could not get enough board support for a quorum. So that can come back again. I believe that ordinance is being changed and another committee can pass it. And again, something like that or some of the other major items that are facing us, facing the neighborhood council, will be called for as a special meeting. As we saw what happened at the last board meeting, we didn't even have that and we barely got through half of the uh, meeting itself. So something like the wildlife ordinance will be scheduled if the board members don't want to show up and there's no quorum, then I've done, the president has done their job by trying to agendize it. I hope that answers your question, Julie. Yeah, under this, does it, are you saying that a board member can bring a motion to a meeting without it having gone through committee first? Correct, it's happened many times. It happens at almost every meeting. What do we do tonight that was like that? The Richard uh, Niederberg reimbursement. Okay. And at okay. the last meeting, it was, uh, what was the motion, Jeff, that you brought at the last meeting? It was regarding the, the bonk board right. of neighbor board council meeting. appointee. Um, usually a board member um, will do this if time is of the essence. So it's not something that's done. Usually things go through committee, but sometimes I remember last year when we had these redistricting matters that were before us. We had to get stuff done very quickly. So it didn't have time to go through committee. So I guess that's where a board member can submit something that is, uh, you know, time time is of the essence so we can get that thing heard uh, on the next board, board meeting agenda. And, and yeah. Julie, you do raise a good question. I think maybe you're alluding to board members bringing motions that should have gone through committee first. And once the motion is brought forth to the board, it would then need a second. And if the board feels it's not worthy, it doesn't get a second. If it gets a second, the argument can still be, hey, wait a minute, I think this should go to X committee first 
to be sussed out before we vote. I'm voting no, and everyone votes no, and it goes back to committee. That's actually happened before as well. So it's really not a process that is, is right for abuse in that direction. It's more right for abuse by a president who just won't put motions uh, on, on an agenda. I hope that answers your question. Okay, yeah, it just seems like there should be consensus by more than one person to bring a motion forward, but I guess you're saying you can bring it forward and it can be rejected at the meeting. Correct. Okay. Ira? I like the spirit of this motion. However, I'd like to see some, some power by the president to be able to uh, maybe postpone that motion to the following meeting if it's not a time sensitive motion. I, I, I think this, um, I mean, our, our, our agenda is getting more and more packed with more and more motions. So uh, I'd like there to be some kind of a, a, a filter, albeit doesn't have to be used for every agenda, but I'd like the president to be able to have some kind of say uh, to avoid having an agenda that is unnecessarily packed. Maybe something can go to the next the next month. If this passes, that is not a possibility. And I think that um, once the president loses some of that discretion or all of that discretion, I think it's just a kind of a domino effect. I think it's, um, I don't want to say dangerous because I mean, it's not really dangerous, but uh, it, it just sets the wrong precedent. Thanks. Richard? Yeah, uh, last week, I came up with a problem trying to get an assembly for people for the budget committee. A lot of people choose to recuse themselves because they're on the Residents Association, which is a mother organization for beautification. So people wanted to um, recruit themselves. This could be a problem in the future. I'm just trying to see basically if the solution fine. If not, I'll keep on trying or maybe Scott can fix it. But we have a lot of recruitals on this particular one because of dual membership, interlocking directorates between the SCRA and SCNC. Yes. I, I don't think there's a way you can put some kind of discretion um, with the office of the president here with, without it being open to abuse. Um, you know, the president could say, well, yeah, we just didn't get it. It, it can make the agenda. We'll try to get it next month. And then what the president says, well, there are other items that are more pressing than your item and kicks it to the next month and then the next month. So at some point, discretion can be abused as well. I don't see how we could write that in um, without some kind of mechanism that would allow abuse by a a dictatorial president, not that Scott's dictatorial, but uh, if, if someone were to come along and, and, and abuse it, um, that could be problematic. This way, um, board members can also use their own discretion and say, you know what, our, our, our agenda's packed, why don't I kick, kick my stuff to the following board meeting, which is what I, I told Scott last month. I said, look, if you can't get to my stuff, kick it over to the next next month, that's fine with me. So. Board members can also use their their discretion to to help uh, make things more efficient. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I've only been here a little while, but I take Jeff's warning about Scott's dictatorial leanings. So, um, what if there was a provision where a the board could override the presidential veto if a motion was denied twice? the third time the board, if it voted to put it on the agenda, could override a presidential veto. How are you going to get it on the agenda when I set the agenda for a vote? Uh, and we're not allowed I, I to don't, I don't see committee, I don't see board members abusing the process and throwing, you know, ridiculous motions month after month. Plus the, the president does have some discretion to put that item as the last item on the agenda. And if our agendas are too long, we'll never get to it. We'll just uh, adjourn before we get to it, if that becomes a problem. It'll be the right, Jeff, he's thinking about it. it. It'll be the 33rd item on the agenda and at item number 32, we'll move to adjourn and problem solve. How's that?
We vote. Okay, so we're voting on 12-5. Kim Clements is absent. Dean Cutler is absent. Randall Freed absent. Ira Gold. No. Jeff Harwick. Yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Cheek Meehan. Yes. Brenda Marino. Yes. Richard Naderberg. Yeah, reluctantly. Uh, Karen, Karen Soros absent. Adam Summers absent. Alexa Steinberg. Yes. Abby Velasco. Yes. Motion passes. Filing number six. Motion the Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, approves amending operating procedures, Article 4, meetings, Section 5, special rules for conduct of meetings, paragraph F, by striking it entirely, uh, quote, subparagraph F, a committee chairman may allow for a member to join the meeting via telephone. However, that member shall not count towards quorum nor vote on any motions um, that's it. So what we're doing is we're striking entirely subparagraph F, which I think is rather archaic in terms of, you know, the pandemic. A lot of our meetings are, well, all our meetings are via Zoom. People call in all the time. And I, I think under those circumstances, a committee member um, should not have his or her rights taken away just because they're using the medium of phone for purposes of a quorum or voting on motions. I just think that's kind of ridiculous right now. So this is just simple housekeeping to, to get rid of something that's very archaic and doesn't make a lot of sense. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Going to public comment now on this item six. If you'd like to speak on that, raise your hand. You have one minute. Go to go ahead, please. <laughs> yes, and again, this is another evil thing that we see here. Yes, as you know, they're in Sacramento trying to play around with, first it's COVID, and now it's Zoom meetings and remotes. They don't want you to meet in person anymore. No, they want you to stay in these virtual prison boxes that you see here on the screen, yes. But Scott figured it out, and he's taking it out of the rule. So that way it doesn't offend. So people that are on this call, snitches, snitches. Some of them might be named Randy, for example. I'm just using a hypothetical name. Randy might file a, uh, a Brown Act violation. But now with this thing gone, now there's no chance of that. You will follow the AB 361 protocol by default. Well done. That's time, please. Yes. Continue. As we continue the cleanup of the mess left by one Randall fraud. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else from the public care to comment on this agenda item? Please raise your hand. Not seeing any more hands. Public comment is closed. Over to the board. Richard? It sure will be great to meet in, in person again, which obvious who's here, who's not there, and what they're doing. Thank you, Richard. Anyone else from the board before we vote on this one? Let's vote. Okay, so we're voting on 12-6. Kim Clement is absent. Dean Cutler absent. Randall Freed absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Hartwick. Yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel? Yes. Chip Meehan? Yes. Brenda Marino? Yes. Richard Nitterberg? Yes. Karen Soros is absent. Adam Summer is absent. Alexa Steinberg? Yes. Abby Velasco? Yes. Motion passes. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Moving on to the last item, 13. Good of the order. Brief comments from board members on items that are not on the agenda. Raise your hand if you're a board member and you'd like to make a comment on something not on the agenda for the good of the order. Brandon. 
and then Ira and then Chip. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier and um, it was something that um, Ruth brought up, streetlights and Streets LA and their schedule of repairing streetlights. And I mentioned before, according to um, George at CD4, it takes upwards of two months and that's a minimum to get to a streetlight. Um, obviously it's a problem with the copper wiring and such. We were talking to Krikorian at um, National Night Out and they want to replace it with um, fiber optics, I think it might be. But in the meantime, um, big swaths of lights are out, so it'd be great. I, I don't know if Jeff can pull this off, if he can maybe get somebody from Streets LA to a public safety meeting to better explain if they're accelerating the process, um, if anything's changing in terms of the um, timeline to get these street lights attended to. Uh, I think that would be a pretty good um, agenda item for public safety. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Ira? Yeah, somebody just some good some good stuff. Good news. Somebody just um, uh, they wrote in earlier. Actually, they came to um, the booth that we had at Farmers Market, and she was talking about a uh, a storefront that had a lot of graffiti. There's a lot of debris in there, so um, I had her write us and uh, filed a graffiti removal. And within a couple of days, the city responded, which was really impressive, and and albeit not the best not the cleanest job but um the city at least removed some of the uh, graffiti from the outside um so i i don't know i'd, I'd like to i'd like to see that i'd like to see that we have some kind of uh, uh, impact even if it's something really really small and and, and hyper local so that's a positive thing that happened this week it balances out the syringes that i've been seeing on the ground <laughs> thanks ira chip yeah, um, one of the uh, the things that came up in the meeting yesterday, and I'd actually seen it before, uh, but it really struck me, I had the epiphany during the ad hoc meeting on the Harvard Westlake River Park project. Um, but uh, uh, Peter Cole's concept of having a 3D sort of a revolving kind of a Google Earth sort of uh, perspective on the buildings. If I go back to all of the land use issues we've had since last couple of months, it's all about we're not quite sure what we're getting. Is it 70 something? Is it 40? If we actually had that sort of a site uh, of a digital site that we could look around and you could actually see what the neighborhood looked like, where that particular project fell from a profile, a horizon relative to the neighborhood, I think it'd be really helpful. What Peter showed me, he had paid for out of his own pocket. It was not insignificant, it wasn't crazy. Uh, something he doesn't want to do again, a larger project would be more expensive. Um, so we need to figure it out. And it also wasn't perfect. Um, so the technology should be there. Some geek living in 91604 does this for fun. We need to find out who they are. So we could start to have as a standard offering from anyone that's off that's proposing a project that you can see how it fits into the neighborhood. We're not there yet, but we should try. Thanks. Thank you, Chip. Anyone else from the board care to make a comment? I will go to public comment on this item and then we'll adjourn. Not seeing any more hands. Goat, go ahead, please. Yes, we see Chip has his hoof raised. <laughs> yes, the good of the order. See, see how nice we end the meeting now with the respect accorded board members, unlike the previous dictator, who would just raise his hoof and say, no, next meeting, you can talk about that offline. See how things are done. This is Robert's Rules of Order at its best. However, we have bad news. Apparently in Alaska tonight, ranked choice voting has seated a Democrat in the only congressional seat in the entire state. So it appears in November that the Democratic Party will retain both houses of Congress. <laughs> so get your requests up. What kind of things do you want free, Brandon? Tell us what debts you want erased, and God Puppet will refer it to his local Democratic that's friend. That's fine, please conclude. Yes, your that's right. Yes, the hell is about to begin. 
God predicted this. <laughs> That's to leave on a happy note. I think uh, we're ready now for item 14 for adjournment. Chip, your hand is up for some other reason by mistake. Good. Uh, anyone object to adjourning? I'd like to thank all the board members who made this quorum possible. So we were able to finish up the business from the last meeting and not tack it on to uh, September. So thank you all for, for attending. Thank you members of the public who toughed it out to the very end. And we actually got out in uh, two hours and three minutes. So I move to adjourn at 9.03 PM. I second your motion. I'm not seeing any objections. Good night, everybody. Stay cool and we'll see you at the next meeting. Bye. Good morning, Alexa.